Today I'll be trying a truly old school streamer for Coho Blue. This is one of a family of flies tied in various color combinations that originated around 1938 in the Puget Sound and they were originally tied on big hooks and trolled slowly behind boats to take both coho and chinook salmon. So a smaller version of the fly was included in Les Johnson's Sea Run Cutthroat book and it's this little photograph from the book that I've used as the basis for my version. Now the original fly included the option for painted on eyes and so I've included the eyes on my fly. You can see the pattern is tied on a traditional long streamer hook in keeping with the classic style and the hook I'm using is the Daiichi 2340 which is 6x long. You could also use Chemco 300s. Unfortunately these hooks are bronze so eventually they're, they're just going to rust out in salt or brackish water but I'm not aware of any stainless hooks that are this long. So my thread is 70 denier ultra thread in black. I like a thread which lays flat for these tinsel bodied flies. Uh, Flymaster 8 aught would be another good thread. I'm going to tie in the thread behind the eye and then about a couple of eye lengths back I'm going to attach the rib. In this case the rib is silver oval tinsel. So I'll tie that along the top of the shank, like so. And then by holding it up and away, I can keep it neatly along the top of the hook. I'm going to pause every now and again just to flatten the thread by spinning the bobbin counterclockwise. And I'll stop when I'm opposite the point of the hook. just there. Then I'm going to advance my thread in touching turns all the way back up to where the rib was tied in. Next I'll take some mylar tinsel in a medium size to wrap the body. I'm going to make a 45 degree diagonal cut on the end for an easier tie in. I'm holding the cut end against the shank of the hook with the gold side facing me. I'll tie that point down securely. Now I'll flip the tinsel over on itself to reveal the silver side. Now you don't want to overlap when you're winding on the tinsel. If you just hold it under tension you'll actually feel the edge click into place behind the previous turn and this becomes much easier after you tied a few flies. You can use the rotary function of your vise to speed this up but I find it works much better if you do it manually. When I get to the bend of the hook I've changed direction and then you want to make sure you get a good four or five wraps um, of thread to trap and tie down that tinsel before you let go or, or you risk it unwinding on you. So front as well, front and back. Cut off the tinsel close and then just tidy it up. I'm going to grab my rib and work in the opposite direction with one complete turn and then seven spiral wraps. Now I can't remember if I said it earlier but this particular fly I'm tying on a size 8. You could also do size 6. Seven wraps. So trap and tie that off in just the same way as you did with the mylar. OK, 
Okay, that's the ticket. So I've got some white bucktail and I'm going to select just a very small clump. I'm going to pull out all the under hair and you know, bits that aren't lying straight. So for this fly I want the wing hair to be more or less the same length. So I'm going to stack the butt tail points first in my wide mouth hair stacker. Now the tips are even. I'm just going to remove a few hairs that I don't want. And I'm left with a pretty sparse bunch. There's about 20 hairs there. So I'm going to pinch wrap a few turns really tightly. And then just check to make sure everything's sitting right. I've got just less than a hook length extending beyond the bend. You could make this one and a half hook lengths. It, it's just up to you. So I'll snip off the butts at a shallow angle and then secure with a few more wraps. Next I'm going to take a little bit of olive bucktail and basically repeat that whole process again. This time I'm only going to use about about half as much as I did the white. It's all lined up. few turns to get it seated. I'm just making sure that it's sitting the way I want it to. Now I missed a few of those a few of those butt ends, so I need to trim those away. Finally I've got some blue bucktail. This is what they market as dark blue. I'm going to use about the same amount, um, perhaps a little bit more than the olive. a few there, it doesn't matter. That's nice and straight. Again I've made a bit of a mess with those butt ends so tidy up is in order. I'm just going to make a thread head and not too big. It 
just just so that I've covered everything up. And then a whip finish. Now you could leave it just like that, but um, I'm going to add some of these tiny little stick-on eyes. I was using black and white Sally Hansons to paint on eyes, uh, but my hands aren't nearly steady enough to make a, a decent job of it. And the, the trick with these tiny eyes is to pry an eye off the sheet with the tip of a bodkin, and then use finger pressure just to prise it away from the tip and, and onto the onto the threads. That one looks okay. So I'll do the other side. Come off. That's got it. They are more or less lined up. So this is solar res, bone dry, UV cure resin. And I'm going to put just a little dab right between the eyes so that it runs down between the, the eyes and the head. I'll do the same on the bottom. This is just to get them fixed in place. and then cure that. This bone dryer is really good. It dries very quickly. I'm going to take some more of the resin and just paint a very thin coat over the eyes and the rest of the head just to seal everything in place. And then we have the coho blue, which is just as effective for C-run cutthroat. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. So best of luck and take care.